entirety of the information is as follows. Source, colon, KTVT, must courtesy. These pictures, courtesy of KTVT, our network news service affiliate in Dallas in the Metroplex. And look at this. It appears to me we have a great truck. It appears to me it's not a new truck. It appears to me it's going faster than everyone else. And clearly police are chasing it. No clue why. But it's happening, so we're going to watch it. So that's what I know. Let's watch along. We can't listen into the chopper. We, when we have our own station up there, uh, we can listen to the chopper. But the rules on NNS, which is the network news service, uh, are that you can use their pictures, and they're happy to do that, but we're not allowed to hear their sound in the chopper. So what we're going to do is watch. We're the only ones doing this, so if you want to see it, you've got to stay here. And away they go. Don't know what he did. Don't, don't know why they're chasing him. Don't know anything. Jonathan Hunt, do you know anything? I don't know any more than you do, oh, Shep, well, then I'm I'll excited keep it here. to see this going on. You keep it there. All right, then. If you don't, go, go find out something. I'll find right. something out for you. Find something. Go up to the desk and ask for Tim Gone. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Uh, the car's moving. The truck is moving. It's clearly on an elevated highway, it looks like to me, down there on the side, doesn't it? It looks to be a uh, mixed-use neighborhood. I see another lane over there, which may be a parking lot. Appears to be a parking lot. No, this is in Dallas. I know that it's 2.52 p.m. in Dallas, and I know that there was a stoplight there, and he didn't stop, and he took a right. And now we're following this truck. Don't know what he did. Don't know why they're chasing him. But we do know that they want him to stop, and then he's not going to. We've seen these before, haven't we? They end most often in the same. I used to say they always end with the guy getting caught. And then there was this one in, in Los Angeles where they drove the truck into the parking lot, of one of those parking lots that I believe it was at the Beverly Center, but I'm not sure of that. And they drove it in there, and the guy somehow got away, like changed clothes or something, and sneaked out of the, out of the mall. But aside from that one time, in 12 years of car chases, they don't get away. And quite frankly, this guy probably won't either. He's not going at a crazily high speed, which is good. Uh, there don't, there, it doesn't appear that there are a lot of pedestrians around, which is also good. Uh, what the suspicion is, uh, whether there's one or two people inside. In the case in California, we had a couple who were in there, and uh, that ended successfully. We've, we've talked about, he, he's down on his rims, is that right? So, yeah, so they've already uh, put out those strips that uh, blow those tires out for them, and uh, it's forcing him, whether or her, I don't want to make any assumptions, uh, to slow, slow down a little bit. Uh, there have been a lot of different rules and, and a lot of different training that have been set up over the last several years in police departments all around the country for situations just like this. Uh, there have been some dangerous situations, even some deadly situations with car chases. So they've come up with new procedures and routines uh, to help minimize the risk uh, uh, for both pedestrians, other drivers, for the police, and even for the suspect. So one of the common things they do is they have these strips, essentially like nails in them, that they blow the tires out. And if we're going to guess that that's what happened here because he's driving around on his rim. Uh, it was interesting earlier in the week when we had a, a car chase, the guy stopped and got out of the car and then got back in and was trying to drive away. His tires were blown out, so that didn't last very long. We're just starting to get some information about why police are chasing this truck. It started out apparently as a carjacking, so I'm going to presume here that uh, he is not in his own vehicle, but this is a, a, a truck that was stolen and police uh, obviously making pursuit through a residential area now, but uh, fairly slow p speed pursuit, given the fact that uh, the back tire, at least that we saw, uh, was blown out here. Uh, we were talking earlier about the kind of training that they get, and they always have to do a risk assessment uh, it will depend on exactly what he's accused of, whether there was violence involved, if this was a, a carjacking, it automatically would escalate the situation. They want to take this guy in. But as I said, they also want to minimize the risk here. They're in an area that's uh, a little less crowded. What we've seen before is, you know, many of these highway chases, people are weaving in and out of traffic. They're on a narrow street. The, the guy doesn't seem to be bothered by the fact that he doesn't have uh, a tire. Uh, Dylan Radigan is going to be coming up next with the Dylan Radigan Show. We're going to continue to follow this, but uh, apparently they have a, a carjacker inside that uh, silver truck are following him at a low rate of speed through Dallas, and we will keep you posted. That's going to do it for me. I'm Chris Jansing. Dylan Radigan is up next. It's our understanding that this began now, I knew I'd get information, 
as a routine traffic stop of a suspected suspected felon. Well, we're not altogether sure about that, uh, but I but I can tell you that they that the officers at the scene suspected that this stop was of a felon. Now, in some jurisdictions, it would matter whether that felon is violent or not. In some jurisdictions, it would matter if the felony happened recently. Like if he had just committed a violent felony, then you know you're going to be on him PDQ. But da Dallas police now confirm that this is a stolen vehicle. All right, so you know a stolen vehicle. What we don't know is what else this guy is thought to have done. Sometimes they're running, hoping they can get away. Sometimes they're just driving and having one last smoke. You know. And I don't know what this is, but he's going pretty slowly. He doesn't appear to be acting too erratically. And uh, it might be that he's just not quite ready to go to jail just yet. But the thing about the chase is, if you do this, you're, you're committing more crimes now. So the list of what they can get you for grows longer as this chase continues. And it's not a wise thing to do. You're going to jail. I mean, it's not as if the guy, it's, or worse. Now these pictures from KDFW, Fox 4, in the Dallas area, and from here we can listen to Chopper. That's the great thing about having the KDFW Chopper, is that we can listen in. And you can Dallas police officers in chase. Um, he has been going through several side roads, ran numerous stop signs, hasn't hit anybody that I've seen so far. We've been up over it for about 15 minutes here. Hasn't hit anybody so far that I've seen. Um, has been driving pretty erratic. You never know what these people are going to do in this, this type of scene here. Or this well, I mean, er erratic, I guess, you know, it's all in the eyes of the beholder. You know, whenever anybody's driving, I guess, very dangerous. They're trying to get away from the police. Uh, there's no telling. You can see it just... You saw that? Uh, those are those bumps in the street, slow-down bumps. There. There's no telling what he might do, what kind of crazy antics he might take That's here. That's true. You just never know. You can see now, this is obviously That's a residential... Go ahead. This is obviously a residential neighborhood. What you're hearing is the guy in the chopper from our station, Fox 4 in Dallas, we love Fox 4, and we thank you for the pictures and, and all your information all year round. But this particular one, he's speaking with his station and giving information back and forth. They might do a quick news cut in at some point or something. But mostly he's just wandering along and watching, and then he'll narrate as, as time permits. So this is live in Dallas, Texas, and streaming live on foxnews.com. So if you're, uh, if you're listening to us on Sirius or XM or you want to go to the computer or you realize your world with Neil Cavuto is coming up and we're going to get away from this and you want to watch it, you can watch it. But you have to watch Neil Cavuto too. So you've got you to you gotta do two things at once. If you want to watch this, you've got to go to foxnews.com, watch it live streaming, and at the same time watch your world with Neil Cavuto. I don't know what's going to happen here, but I assure you this. Whatever happens, no matter what it is, we'll report it tonight on the Fox Report with me. So I'll see you tonight, 7 Eastern, 6 p.m. in Oxford. Until then, your world with Neil Cavuto starts right now. Rock right there. Um, it's rush hour right now, which means obviously you're not going anywhere. Rush hour in Dallas. This is a chase, folks. It's a slow chase because there's a lot of cars in the way. Um, police are on the tail of this silver pickup truck. It's stolen. This started out as a carjacking. The person in this pickup truck thought about giving up they got out hopped right back in and told the police basically you're gonna have to get me and that's what they're trying to do right now it is uh three o'clock in the afternoon in dallas and this person in the pickup truck is in a pickle right now you may have uh we caught this live just in time mike brooks is to my right he gets us through these things Mike, uh, this is a bad time for a bad guy to try to get away it sure is and uh, apparently rochelle a couple of the tires at least two of the tires are blown out uh, to rush hour traffic, it looks like he, he or she, it looks like I think it's a, a, a male, is going to get Mike, stuck in the traffic. Mike, it usually is you guys that try to do uh, this. It is, but uh, we, we know earlier in the week we had two chases in one day, and yeah. the guy went to get out, and he got back in the car, and he took off again after firing at police, yes. and he was with a woman. Fair so enough. he Point had taken. A, uh, Point the, taken, the Bonnie and Clyde of car chases, but this guy... Uh, don't know if he's armed or not, but again, you always have to go on the assumption somebody with a car with a carjacking. A lot of times are armed and dangerous because sure. you, you don't know why did they why did they carjack this vehicle? It's to get away from to try to steal a truck, but then things didn't go too well. So now There's in this so traffic, and you've got another we got another car coming in on his right, and well that car got out of the way, almost had him almost had him boxed in. 
But uh, and certainly you want civilians to get out of the way. Absolutely, and uh, these things are these things are very very dangerous. As I said, we've had a number of uh, law enforcement officers killed in the last uh, number of years. Well, he's on During the rim pursuit. right there. Yep, he's on the he's on the rim on his on his right rear tire is totally gone. It uh, it's hard to see. It looked like one of the one of the tires on the other car on the other side was gone. So he's not going to be able to get up uh, to to a high rate of speed and with a with a vehicle like that. But we've seen him, Rochelle, run on a number of flat tires before. But uh, we can tell you now. I'm, I'm hearing Mike. It's been going on for about half an hour now. Looks like he's getting back on to the freeway, which is certainly um. Certainly not what you want. We've actually lost sight of it. Wish, wish we could tell you what freeway this is in Dallas. You know, there's a lot of freeways. It could be 35. It could be 45. Right. There's a, there's 635. There's a number of freeways in Dallas. We don't know which one this is. We've lost sight of it. When we see it again, I need you to be looking for a pick. I mean, I'm sorry, a, a silver pickup truck right. is what police are trying to get to. It's a stolen vehicle that started out as a carjacking. Uh, it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon now in Dallas. This has been going on since 2.30 in the afternoon in Dallas. And um, police are trying to get up to that there truck right there. Um, the backside is on a rim. Looks like another tire might actually be flat. I uh, don't know if this person is armed and dangerous, but if you're the kind of person that's going to carjack someone in broad daylight, you clearly are a dangerous person. Absolutely. Clearly. And, and you see the vehicles trying to catch up to them. Uh, and some people always say, well, Mike, why do they run? Who knows why these people run? Because they think they can get away with a with, with helicopter. There's no way they are usually always caught. We saw one they last year. Yeah, they, you know, they do. Clean and and, and, uh, and and they just decide, well, I'm going to run from the police. And as we said, Rochelle, this guy looked like he was going to give up. But then he got out and then he decided he wasn't, got back in the car and took off again. Sometimes, but, too, Mike, it seems like they, they're trying to buy time to get rid of whatever they may have right. in the vehicle with them. We've seen that happen time and time again. And we saw that earlier this week where somebody threw something out of the car. We're, uh, we weren't able to say exactly what it was, but this was after firing at, at law enforcement. Uh, we don't believe that this guy has exchanged any, any, any rounds with law enforcement. Mm -hmm. It's just right now, I don't want to say just, but it's a, it's a carjacking. Don't know if it's armed, a armed carjacking or not, but they have been in pursuit of this guy now for a little bit over, you said a little bit over half an hour. And he's not going that fast. So well, law enforcement, they're probably trying, looking for a place where they could possibly do a pit maneuver. Do they know who this guy is? We don't know. Uh, but that's, but there's always, when you have a chase, if, you, if you have, they have any information, there's always parallel investigation going on during the time of the chase. But this guy on, looked like fairly remote uh, cars getting out of the way. It's not going that, they're not going that fast. And do explain that, Mike, because sometimes I know people sit at home and they think, I don't know why the why police officers don't just floor it and get this guy when they know they can, but it's not always a matter of just speeding up and catching the guy. Explain why they keep their distance sometimes. No, you, you want to maintain, you want to make sure that you're going to be safe. And you, if you believe this person is armed, it looks like... You're trying to see the signs, too. Yeah, I'm trying, I, I'm trying to see the signs. It. I can't catch it, Mike. I'm trying. You know, you, you, you don't want to put, as, as an officer, you don't want to put yourself in a position where that person can be at a, at a, at a tactical advantage to you. So even sometimes people say, oh, why don't you just use a pit maneuver? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you, you wind up in a bad position after the pit maneuver. And a lot of times, he's getting, it looks like he's getting off of the interstate again now, Rochelle. And uh, a lot of times after they, somebody can try pit maneuver, uh, you're, you're in a bad position. And you don't know how a car, especially with, with uh, at least one tire, we see the right, he's running on the rim on his right rear tire. You don't know how it's going to react. Now, it looked like he had had no traffic in front of him. Then he got off on this ramp, and now he's back in traffic again. So, and one of the other things, too, uh, again, this is coming from our affiliate, uh, HLN affiliate WFAA out of Dallas, mm -hmm. is um, where is this person going? Does a person, a lot of times, will try to get back to an area that they're familiar right, with, right. where they know the roads. You know, and that, that's the big thing. Do they know anything at all about this guy uh, who, who performed this, this crime? We don't know. Uh, and but sometimes they're just driving, Mike, right? They, sometimes they do. they're just driving. They do. And uh, it's, I, I'm amazed that he is going, he has this much control, but it's a rear wheel and not a front wheel that's flat. So uh, it just, again, riding on the, it does make a big difference, riding on that rim. But you can't get too much acceleration with a, uh, just riding on the rim, especially with uh, if, if it's a rear wheel drive you know so what, and he's getting uh, further and further away from the highways he now. is and, and going very very slow going very slow but uh, 
but uh, there's usually a plan. There's usually a, a coordinated plan on how they're going to, if they decide to go ahead and do some kind of maneuver, there's usually a plan from the police helicopter with the ground units. You know, what they're doing right now, we don't know. And even if we knew, we wouldn't know because you always have to think, could possibly the person in this car could have some kind of satellite radio and, and listen to what we're doing. So we very always had to be we always had to be very careful what we say to Rochelle. Getting a little but, more uh, difficult to see him because he, he, because he's not on the freeway. He's on the streets now. Some of these tall buildings are getting in the way. But um, clearly the police are still on his tail. But you, you hate to see him being on, on, on the streets now. He's, um, there's there's pedestrians that can be in the way. Right. Did you, did you see that right rear wheel starting to smoke I'm now? Sure. So uh, we've seen... Other chases too, Rochelle, where the where the wheels, uh, the rims have started to smoke and set the car on fire. It happens. We're seeing that happen too. This looks like uh, I'm trying to think where this is. Uh, some of these buildings look familiar. Clearly some sort of commercial area. Yeah, uh, it looks like almost uh, I'm condominiums, just, perhaps. It's almost North something? Dallas to me. I, that's, uh, but I can't be. Can't In be situations for sure. like this is when people start to fly through intersections as well. This this type of situation is extremely dangerous. Uh, okay, very much so, and uh, and you don't. Know, some people say, well, why don't you get a unit in front of them and put out, you know, spike strips? And uh, that's that's a great idea, but sometimes it's not your, there's not a place to do it. You can't get units out in front of the guy fast enough because you don't know where someone's going to go. And uh, with with the surface traffic, it uh, looks like someone may... Mike, he doesn't have a shirt on. No shirt on. My goodness. Yeah, uh, it's kind of, kind of sitting you back. You hate to see that. Yeah, no, you you, you do. And uh, you, you you never know, too, what, uh, what's going through this person. is. Uh, you don't even know if he's sober or something. Yeah, exactly. Could be altered mental status. Could be someone uh, uh, under the influence of alcohol, drugs. You just don't know. But it looks like just one wheel out. I thought one of the other tires had blown out, too. But right now, Rochelle, it looks like just the right rear wheel is out. And, uh, and Another piece of information, Mike, I've been able to find out from my producer. We're hearing that this vehicle, the silver pickup truck, um, riding on a rim, we're hearing that the, this driver, this suspect, allegedly took this vehicle at knife point. Uh, okay. At knife point, just to give you an idea of what police know that they're dealing with. Well, uh, whether it be a gun, whether it be a knife, mm -hmm. it's still someone who's armed. And exactly. you still have to consider them armed and dangerous. And, uh, and, you, and again, we talked about the mental status of someone like this. Mm -hmm. you, you, just, you just don't know. And uh, but you're not going at a high rate of speed like we see because mm -hmm. uh, probably most likely because of that uh, right rear rear wheel that has blown out and uh, driving on the wrong side of the road the now side, cutting going through, through intersections going through intersections again this uh, is probably about 45 minutes ago and it's uh, three o'clock beginning rush hour sure. in, da in the Dallas Fort Worth area so uh, again still very very dangerous and uh, you know this is this is the third chase that we've seen this week. And uh, the other two were in the Los Angeles area, and uh, and this one in Dallas. It's not in Houston, which is your old stopping grounds, which we've go. seen a number of times. And these are the situations where police, like you said, they, they don't want to speed up the situation. They don't they don't want to escalate it no. any more than it needs to be. They they let him set the pace as opposed to making him feel like he needs to go any faster, be any more dangerous than it already is. Exactly, and uh, and that you we all right. Um, Mike, I want you to keep an eye on this. Absolutely. We're going we're to bring um, update people on another situation, another develop, uh, breaking story of the day. We will definitely keep you updated on that, Chase. Also, we need to know, Melissa, well, I know some of you were frustrated we had to go to commercial. I assure you, we still kept an eye on it. You didn't, you didn't miss anything significant, fortunately. Um, I know this is dangerous. Nobody was harmed. Nothing happened. He did not hurt anybody in the process of this chase. Um, still riding on a rim. This is a, a silver pickup truck you're seeing. The focus of this chase, it is stolen. What we're hearing is that the person driving this truck, this suspect, allegedly took this truck at knife point uh, about 45 minutes ago. It is 3.15 in the afternoon, local time, in Dallas, riding on this rim at times that has been smoking. And he was on the freeway for a while, took off on the surface streets, flew through some intersections, caused some really dangerous, close situations. A law enforcement analyst, Mike Brooks, is walking us through this. Um, yeah, he was on I-75, apparently on I-75 southbound, and then he got off and he was on Cedar Springs. Now, I can't tell exactly what uh, what street he's on now, but he has worn that right rear tire down to nothing. Yes. He's going to be riding on the axle here if he keeps this up. And we saw it uh, we saw it smoking. Now, 
you see the you see the officer still kind of just just tailing along. Mm -hmm. There's uh, there, there's no reason to agitate him to, anymore. There's no reason to, to to push the incident. Let the incident play out as long as he's not making any any kind of threat. He has doesn't. We haven't seen him hit any other vehicles like we see sometimes sure. people busting through intersections, hitting other cars, but still very very dangerous. We saw he just went through a red light there mm -hmm. at that particular intersection, and I and you see that smoke. You see that smoke coming off that. Uh, off the metal that's uh, just it's got to be red hot and loud in that car if you've oh. ever ridden on a rim it's just loud and it's not and, it, and it's hot in dallas at this yes. time of year and, and you see him with the window down no shirt on look like he's got some tattoos on his arms mm -hmm. law enforcement may know who this guy is right. they may know who he is uh and, uh we don't know if he has any kind of criminal past but we do know that he did carjack this vehicle at knife point. Now, he's made, oh, almost had an accident right there. Looks like there's nobody in the car with the mic no. from what we can see. And this is the closest we've seen the police car so far. Earlier, mm -hmm. right before we brought this to you, we, we, it's, the information we had was that he did get out. Right. And then he got back in. So he's had moments where he's thought about, it seems, giving up. And this is the closest we have seen we have seen law enforcement get. It, it is. And going very, very slow, just about uh, 10 miles an hour right. or so. With now you see two units there, and uh, I'm sure if they broaden it out, you'd see you see many more. But uh, is he going to give up here? We don't know. As you said, we, it, we, he did initially, but then got back in the in the vehicle. But he cannot go much further, Rochelle, with this car the way it is. Mike, uh, he's got the windows down. Could they be speaking to him, yelling at him? Oh, they could. I, if I was one of the officers, I'd be on the PA, sure. on the PA, okay. telling him to to pull over to stop. Uh, but he just he just keep on going and almost. Almost looks like he's on. Uh, he's on. The, uh, he's got his hand up to his I head. Was it, 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 and I was trying to see if he was on his cell phone, but it looked like he's just got his hand up to his head. He was rubbing his head, no shirt on, uh, and, and just because he, again, you don't know what's going through this guy's mind. Uh, but it does, as you said, he does look like he's in the car by himself. Uh, and law enforcement, that's just just ta just tailing right behind him. Uh, it almost looks like he's on the phone now. It looks like he's holding the holding the the. Uh, Something up to his to his right, his mm -hmm. left hand to his right ear, so uh, and, and staring with his right, staring with his right hand. And everyone on the other side can see exactly what's happening. Oh, absolutely. We're coming up to another intersection here. Looks like he he does have the green light. Uh, we saw him just a bust an intersection go through a red light just a moment ago. But now back on the surface streets again. So just going along, probably a little bit slower than the speed limit. Mm -hmm. uh, and you never know. He might be talking to police. Uh, there, there have been. I, you know, I was, a, I was a, a hostage negotiator, mm -hmm. and there was, a, there was a number of times where we had somebody in a chase call in to law enforcement, and we got a negotiator on the phone with them, and uh, and it was, an, and wound up being a negotiated surrender. So that's not, that's not out of the realm of possibility, also. But, uh, but, but you, there again, you see, at least, at least four, maybe five. Uh, Cruisers just following at a safe distance behind them. Okay, while well, they're following at a safe distance and trying to let this dangerous situation breathe, we're going to take you to a break. We're not going to miss anything. Uh, we'll, we'll be right back, all right? Please. All right, Victor, one of our viewers, says he's watching this police chase and shaking my head. You know, Victor, I think a lot of people are shaking their heads and hoping this thing ends safely because these car chases are so, so dangerous mike and i think sometimes people forget that they get a rush by watching them yeah. but they just don't realize how many things can go so oh, wrong and we've seen so many times things go really wrong and uh and a lot of people say well why why chase them well there's a lot of departments rochelle they have chase policies mm -hmm. where if it's just from running a red light and then somebody starts to pursue the person they take off they will go ahead and just sometimes break off the pursuit. But when you have an armed carjacking or the, you believe that there's been a serious felony involved, they will chase you. And, I, you know, California Highway Patrol, I've got, I've got some buddies out there, and they said, California Highway Patrol will chase you till the wheels fall off. Well, on this car, they've chased him, and one of the wheels has fallen off wheels, already. And, it's already flat. and let's remind people, this person allegedly did take this silver exactly. pickup truck at knife point. This suspect is a carjacking suspect, a dangerous person. Mike, where it's like is this? like he's pulled into a police station almost. Yes. It, it almost looked like a police lot. Because you see, you saw, you saw the cruiser. At least a couple of Oh, now there. he just went through the fence. He's at an airport. It looks like some That's kind of an airport. Some sort of tower there. It sure was.
Okay, we're going to try our best to figure out where this uh, is right to through take a people. Fence. That looks like a runway of some it sort. It sure does. I, I wonder if it's if it's a general aviation airport or what this is, because it looks like a little taxiway there. Yeah, we're, we're hoping it's not the big airport. No, Surely this DFW. is not DFW. No. But there you see that you see the signs, and that's I can tell you. I mean, he's he's in a restricted what airspace now. The world so he's now been. got federal charges on him now, entering a restricted area like this. This is called a side area okay. for any kind of an airport. You cannot just enter this area at all. And I, now you see he's on he's on a runway. I, I, know, you, I know you've never seen this. Uh, no, no, okay. not, no, we I definitely haven't. But uh, you got a lot of okay, area so you can run around people, in now. Let's remind people, this chase is going on about 50 minutes now. This is the Dallas area. At one point, he was um, right, off his, right on 75 near downtown Dallas. He has somehow made it to a runway. We're going to try to figure out uh, which airport this is. We know it's not the big airport. This is not DFW, but he has made it to some runway. At one point, he was on um, highways, he was on freeways, he was on surface streets, he was flying through intersections, never actually collided with anyone, but he flew through a gate. He, is, um, he, he was turning on to Dallas Love Field Airport so this property. Is, this is the smaller this airport. This is the smaller. This is Love Field. This is Love Field. Yep, and, and, and it's Dallas Police Department is chasing him, but it is Love Field that he is on now. And they have picked up the pace, Mike. They're yes, not they letting have. us breathe like they were before. They no. have picked up the pace. You know, because you don't you know, because you don't know what this guy has and what he might have had on. We know he doesn't have a shirt on, but mm -hmm. does he have more than a knife? We don't know. Was this where he wanted to go? These are all questions that law enforcement is asking himself now, and now he's going to have the federal authorities to answer to because he went into this area of, of an airport. So Dallas Love Field, and they're not going to, I, I, I can't see them letting him go too much further, Rochelle. I think you're going to, we're going to see a resolution one way or the other here shortly. And clearly all air traffic in and out of Love Field in Dallas is shut down down right I, look you see aircraft you see aircraft right there and uh and and there's and yep there's that there's a red pickup in front of him who's trying to run interference with them i i see this coming to uh coming to an end here shortly very quickly. whose red pickup that is i don't know they've run him now into the grass area in between the taxiways and the runways at dallas love field and uh, now they just did a pit maneuver and he is trying to take off but you, he can't get much traction now they're on him. So what happens now? You see officers going right up to him, weapons drawn, try to get him out of that car. They got the door open. They're, he's putting up the struggle. They've got him down on the ground now and in custody. But you don't know what else he has inside that car, Rochelle. And as I said, they were, they were not going to let this go much further on the property of an airport. That's for sure. I think they, they tried to see if he was going to come in quietly. But once you drive onto a runway, Mike, he went there through the is fence. no more letting him play this out himself. No, not at all. And we saw the police cruisers, him going past those, uh, those uh, you know, those police cars. And that's and said, when we both what said, is where that? is he? And then he went through the fence, and then uh, the officers there, I, I think they did, they did a great job. The guy's got a pair of shorts on, no shirt, but once you step it up like he did, that was not, he was, they weren't, they weren't going to let him run around this airport, especially we saw him going past some aircraft. Mm -hmm. uh, he, uh, you talk about, he could have done some even more damage. Okay. Michelle, some serious, serious damage. If there had been planes in the way. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, so, and you do have to wonder if this is where he was possibly headed the entire time. Don't know, but if you look, if you look at that area, the two main airports in Dallas are, are DFW, Dallas-Fort Worth, and Dallas Love Field. And here we see at the, at the end here, that red pickup truck, probably some law enforcement official that was not going to let him get any further, ran him off into the grass, and then we saw a cruiser coming at a pretty good clip and hit him and performed the perfect pit maneuver right there, caught him on the, rent, around the, around the rear quarter panel, spun him around with that right tire with no right wheel at all. There's nowhere he was going to go. They boxed him in, and officers drew their weapons and came up and took him into custody. Good job by... All, all these officers involved, and the bottom line is no officers were injured, no citizens were injured, and everybody gets to go home at the end of this tour. But this perp is now in custody, and he probably faced armed carjacking to some and eluding and some other charges, but now... He brought it to another he level. He brought it to, he stepped it up a whole other level when he crashed through that fence, and now he's facing federal charges, Michelle. Have you ever 
in your life, and you've covered hundreds of chases, oh, yeah. parts of chases, ever seen a suspect bust through a gate at an airport, no, Mike? No, no, this, this is And not just any airport. I mean, no, this is not DFW, but Dallas Love Airport has hundreds of flights that come what? in and out every day. This is, a, this is not some small municipal airport. No, it's Dallas not. Dallas Love Airport is a big airport. It really this is. It's home to Southwest Airlines. This is a big airport. Absolutely. And, uh, and that's why when he got it, when I found out we just, when I got the message it was Dallas Love Field, I'm like, no, this isn't going much further. I can guarantee you that. It's not going to go much further. But uh, with the Dallas Police Department doing the right thing, keeping their distance, letting it, letting it play out, but then he stepped it up another notch. And, Mike, I want to ask you something. There's something that just occurred to me as I saw this red truck. During the break, um, there, were, there was a moment when we saw a red truck fly right past the chase. Yeah. And we wondered if it was a civilian who was maybe interfering that wasn't supposed to be doing something. I wonder if it was this red truck it almost trying like to get it. ahead of the scene. It, it almost looked like it was. Trying to get ahead yeah, of the scene. exactly. And you see... One of the cruisers was either he or one of the cruisers during the pit maneuver knocked out one of the directional series when you're going along the taxiways and runways. It tells you where, you know, basically the street signs for an airport. So he was right. We saw him go right across the end of one of the runways. And he was on one of the taxiways when they forced him into the grass and did that picture perfect pit maneuver. One of the more traumatic endings we've ever seen to a chase at Dallas Love Field. The entirety of the information is as follows. Source, colon, KTVT, must courtesy. These pictures, courtesy of KTVT, our network news service affiliate in Dallas in the Metroplex. And look at this. It appears to me we have a great truck. It appears to me it's not a new truck. It appears to me it's going faster than everyone else. And clearly police are chasing it. No clue why. But it's happening, so we're going to watch it. So that's what I know. Let's watch along. We can't listen into the chopper. We, when we have our own station up there, uh, we can listen to the chopper, but the rules on NNS, which is the network news service, uh, are that you can use their pictures, and they're happy to do that, but we're not allowed to hear their sound in the chopper. So what we're going to do is watch. We're the only ones doing this, so if you want to see it, you got to stay here. And away they go. Don't know what he did. Don't, don't know why they're chasing him. Don't know anything. Jonathan Hunt, do you know anything? I don't know any more than you do, oh, Shepard. Well, then I'm I'll excited keep it here. to see this going on. You keep it there. All right, then. If you don't, go, go find out something. I'll find right? something out for find you. Something. Go up to the desk and ask for Tim Gone. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Uh, the car's move. The truck is moving. It's clearly on an elevated highway, it looks like to me, down there on the side, doesn't it? It looks to be a uh, mixed-use neighborhood. I see another lane over there, which may be a parking lot. Appears to be a parking lot. No, this is in Dallas. I know that it's 2.52 p.m. in Dallas, and I know that there was a stoplight there, and he didn't stop. And he took a right. And now we're following this truck. Don't know what he did. Don't know why they're chasing him. But we do know that they want him to stop, and then he's not going to. We've seen these before, haven't we? They end most often in the same. I used to say they always end with the guy getting caught. And then there was this one in, in Los Angeles where they drove the truck into the parking lot of one of those parking lots that I believe it was at the Beverly Center, but I'm not sure of that. And they drove it in there, and the guy somehow got away, like changed clothes or something, and sneaked out of the, out of the mall. But aside from that one time, in 12 years of car chases, they don't get away. And quite frankly, this guy probably won't either. He's not going at a crazily high speed, which is good. Uh, there don't, there, it doesn't appear that there are a lot of pedestrians around, which is also good. Uh, what the suspicion is, uh, whether there's one or two people inside. In the case in California, we had a couple who were in there, and uh, that ended successfully. We've, we've talked about, he, he's down on his rims, is that right? So. Yeah, so they've already uh, put out those strips that uh, blow those tires out for them, and uh, it's forcing him, whether or her, I don't want to make any assumptions, uh, to slow, slow down a little bit. Uh, there have been a lot of different rules and a lot of different training that have been set up over the last several years in police departments all around the country for situations just like this. Uh, there have been some dangerous situations, even some deadly situations with car chases. So they've come up with new procedures and routines uh, to help minimize the risk uh, uh, for both pedestrians, other drivers, for the police, and even for the suspect. So one of the common things they do is they have these strips, essentially like nails in them, that they blow the tires out. And if we're going to guess that that's what happened here because he's driving around on his rim. Uh, it was interesting earlier in the week when we had a, a car chase, the guy stopped and 
got out of the car and then got back in and was trying to drive away as tires were blown out, so that didn't last very long. We're just starting to get some information about why police are chasing this truck. It started out apparently as a carjacking, so I'm going to presume here that uh, he is not in his own vehicle, but this is a, a, a truck that was stolen and police uh, obviously making pursuit through a residential area now, but uh, fairly slow p speed pursuit, given the fact that uh, the back tire, at least that we saw, uh, was blown out here. Uh, we were talking earlier about the kind of training that they get, and they always have to do a risk assessment uh, it will depend on exactly what he's accused of, whether there was violence involved, if this was a, a carjacking, it automatically would escalate the situation. They want to take this guy in. But as I said, they also want to minimize the risk here. They're in an area that's uh, a little less crowded. What we've seen before is, you know, many of these highway chases, people are weaving in and out of traffic. They're on a narrow street. The, the guy doesn't seem to be bothered by the fact that he doesn't have uh, a tire. Uh, Dylan Radigan is going to be coming up next with the Dylan Radigan Show. We're going to continue to follow this, but uh, apparently they have a, a carjacker inside that uh, silver truck are following him at a low rate of speed through Dallas, and we will keep you posted. That's going to do it for me. I'm Chris Jansing. Dylan Radigan is up next. It's our understanding that this began now, I knew I'd get information, as a routine traffic stop of a suspected, suspected felon. We're not altogether sure about that. Uh, but I but I can tell you that they that the officers at the scene suspected that this stop was of a felon. Now, in some jurisdictions, it would matter whether that felon is violent or not. In some jurisdictions, it would matter if the felony happened recently. Like if he had just committed a violent felony, then you know you're going to be on him PDQ. But da Dallas police now confirm that this is a stolen vehicle. All right, so you know, a stolen vehicle. What we don't know is what else this guy is thought to have done. Sometimes they're running, hoping they can get away. Sometimes they're just driving and having one last smoke. You know? And I don't know what this is, but he's going pretty slowly. He doesn't appear to be acting too erratically. And uh, it might be that he's just not quite ready to go to jail just yet. But the thing about the chase is, if you do this, you're, you're committing more crimes now. So the list of what they can get you for grows longer as this chase continues. And it's not a wise thing to do. You're going to jail. I mean, it's not as if the guy, it's, or worse. Now these pictures from KDFW, Fox 4 in the Dallas area, and from here we can listen to Chopper. That's the great thing about having the KDFW Chopper, is that we can listen in. And he, Dallas police officers in chase. Um, he has been going through several side roads, ran numerous stop signs, hasn't hit anybody that I've seen so far. We've been up uh, over it for about 15 minutes here. Hasn't hit anybody so far that I've seen. Um, has been driving pretty erratic. You never know what these people are going to do in this, this type of scene here. Or this well, I mean, er erratic, I guess, that, you know, it's all in the eyes of the beholder. You know, whenever anybody's driving, like, it's very dangerous. They're trying to get away from the police. Uh, there's no telling. You can see it just... You saw that? Uh, those are those bumps in the street, slow down bumps. There. There's no telling what he might do, what kind of crazy antics he might take That's here. That's true. You just never know. You can see now, this is obviously Set a residential. This is obviously a residential neighborhood. What you're hearing is the guy in the chopper from our station, Fox 4 in Dallas. We love Fox 4, and we thank you for the pictures and, and all your information all year round. But this particular one, he's speaking with his station and giving information back and forth. They might do a quick news cut in at some point or something. But mostly, he's just wandering along and watching, and then he'll narrate as, as time permits. So this is live in Dallas, Texas. And streaming live on foxnews.com. So if you're, uh, if you're listening to us on Sirius or XM or you want to go to the computer or you realize your world with Neil Cavuto is coming up and we're going to get away from this and you want to watch it, you can watch it. But you have to watch Neil Cavuto too. So you've got you to you do two things at once. If you want to watch this, you've got to go to foxnews.com, watch it live streaming, and at the same time watch your world with Neil Cavuto. I don't know what's going to happen here, but I assure you this. Whatever happens, no matter what it is, We'll report it tonight on the Fox Report with me. So I'll see you tonight, 7 Eastern, 6 p.m. in Oxford. Until then, your world with Neil Cavuto starts right now. Rock right there. Um, 
It's rush hour right now, which means obviously you're not going anywhere. Rush hour in Dallas. This is a chase, folks. It's a slow chase because there's a lot of cars in the way. Um, police are on the tail of this silver pickup truck. It's stolen. This started out as a carjacking. The person in this pickup truck thought about giving up. They got out, hopped right back in, and told the police, basically, you're going to have to get me. And that's what they're trying to do right now. It is uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon in Dallas. And this person in the pickup truck is in a pickle right now. You may have, uh, we caught this live just in time. Mike Brooks is to my right. He gets us through these things. Mike, uh, this is a bad time for a bad guy to try to get away. It sure is. And uh, apparently, Rochelle, a couple of the tires, at least two of the tires are blown out. Uh, to rush hour traffic, it looks like he, he or she, it looks like I think it's a, a, a male, is going to get Mike, stuck in the traffic. Mike, it usually is you guys that try to do uh, this. It is, but uh, we, we know earlier in the week we had two chases in one day, and yeah. the guy went to get out, and he got back in the car, and he took off again after firing at police.